Hello everyone. So today we're gonna work on neck, head, and eye rigging. And um, this week I have a uh, some update on the uh, D2L. So these are just a references showing a different type of joints in terms of orientation and rotation and. Um, so you can use these as a uh, reference for understanding the differences between those type of joint, pivot joint, ball and socket, uh, sandal, hinge, plane, and such. And um, these are just a medical reference for the uh, human spine motion. And um, this is a uh, visual data is from the uh, Manchu of Man Human Factor in Design 1960 by Henry uh, Dreyfus if I pronounce correct so it just show a range of motion of the head and the eyes movement and um, this is medical um, x-ray from a uh, cervical spine which is the neck area and um, when we look at this, uh, we can make decision that on our neck rig, we're going to have two controller, the bottom and the middle, and the head. So that will be a total of three uh, movement, three rotation, basically. So let's get started. Okay, um, let's save this scene as, this is from previous um file that we did that I did from last week so we're gonna save as a version 3 okay. and um, now let's take a look at which cervical shape is cervical spine is from here this is the one one two three four five six seven so we have seven objects that will need to parenting to the uh, seven at least seven uh, joints on this hierarchy however if you look at on the side view quick here we go so last time we end the last joint of the spines hierarchy right here we could actually extend that joint one there but somehow I didn't do it so that's fine so what we're gonna do though we will not just create only seven joints we're gonna create a eight and nine on top so the reason is the uh, the, the the extra joint on the bottom will be using for positioning pivot point with a uh, the end of the spine shape or the um, body rotate basically and then the second extra joint will use to be a reference point for pivot rotation on the head we can we can actually parent them to the uh, end of the cervical spine joint also so let's get started just remember seven of them we're gonna start it from here and in right and uh, second will be this so double click on the join setting the join tool setting I mean you can go to skeleton create joints open up option and um, this is my setting scale compensate uncheck everything else and then turn on orient join to world so and um, like I mentioned it in the past that um, the reason that we use all the joint to orient it to the world space at this point because it's easier to set up and um, now when you become a little more intermediate or advanced you can go ahead design orientation as you need or as it serve the function so right now we're gonna use this I'm gonna close it so now the first joint though I want it to be right there however you cannot just click on that that because when you click on it 
Maya will assume that you wanted to connect your join there. You could if you want to, but it will be a little confusing. It's much easier when we separate the rims, different set, and um, easier to organize and easier to figure it out how to fix them or modify them. So we're gonna switch to the uh, selection tool, deselect. Uh oh, it's already selected. Let me undo. Here we go. So too late. <laughs> Anyway, so that choice becomes so big. I'm gonna put it back. So it's my fault uh, You don't need to do that. Okay, so Now I'm gonna reselect it. I'm gonna click somewhere else for now and then click and drag and then move it You can hold V key now You might have to let go for a moment and then hold V key again with middle mouse button you moving pivot point of the joint so that's the first joint and just remember cervical started from here not that one that one's the last of the spine so I'm gonna place the second joint right around there because that what I want it to be a pivot point to rotate it and third here fourth I mean you can move a little backward it's up to you fourth fifth Sixth, I might have drew right. Hold on, yeah, seven, eight. Don't get confused because we have the uh, this one is extra, so eight. And then I want you to place the nine, this will be uh, for the head movement. There we go. And actually, I'm gonna reposition a little bit, I don't like that. And um, you can use up arrow key to go up one level move a little bit I don't like that I don't like the location of it so I just press up arrow key because up is go one level up downs go one level down left and right go to lift uh, left and right go to different branches of hierarchy now I'm done I'm gonna press enter and now I'm gonna change the size of the joints a little bit shift click to expand it and I'm gonna select from number two to number nine and number one I'm gonna leave as big as this is gonna be point three once again guys if somehow um, your scene, your joints are larger than mine. Don't get panic. You might need to check this under display menu, animation, joint size, and my set to point three. So if yours point one, this is gonna look like. See that? So I have to change to point three. There we go. So we have the same scales of the skeleton in the scene because you use my but the joy size you may not s set it to smaller than like what I am so now I changed that size already actually this one can be even smaller I'm gonna do point one five it's just because of the tip okay so now I'm gonna rename them though select all the joints to get started and then we're gonna rename the last join the beginning join differently but right now I'm gonna call SK cervical cervical well you can use C span C spine sorry not C span JNT so that a little shorter so I press execute it so now the first join will have no numbers on it so I'm gonna call c-span base join oh hold on base join okay and then the last one gonna change from it to end join end okay so we have a this is one two C-SPAN 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here we go.
so seven so now I'm gonna template my a uh, mesh layers I should have template from the beginning I don't know why I didn't do that here we go so now these base join we are using for parenting with any one of these but the rotation I wanted to start it from there not from this because that is followed by um, body control already can you see it look like this here we go okay so if you like maybe let's do this first so that it works when we do it so um, change the uh, mesh layer to regular layers I want you to start it to parent so select the cervical poly this one I didn't name this has become one instead so um, let me change to zero so that you know so zero will be on this join join one I didn't match the name you could rename and to match them that would be fine too so I'm gonna press P keep going parenting it select the surface first shift select the join last and press P um, P is shortcut for parenting right there see P okay select press here we go and this one will belong to the last here we go now the tip are stand alone okay so now you can template it okay so so that when you move the joint or rotate see the cervical I go with it that what we want here we go okay so now um, excuse me I was drinking coffee um, so now we are gonna create the spine IK so under skeleton choose spine uh, create IK spine handle open up option we're gonna use the same setting as previous setting so root on curve auto create curve auto simplify curve do not check auto parent curve because we're gonna control the curve by cluster and cluster will follow the uh, um, uh, joint oh c yes controller sorry not joined so and um linear twist node you can leave it off I mean you can't if you wanted to use it to twisting the head uh, it will twist this bone also that might be another show in the future that you want to use so for now I'm not going to use it this is what I can get so click on the cervical one not the best cervical one in at the cervical end here we go you want little extra I mean you could end right here too but this time let's do that extra so that this uh, kind of have a little a little bit of motion also so now it's time to rename this so look at on outliner this has to be SK C span or C spine sorry <laughs> IK okay you can put HD if you want handle and um curve don't leave it there just name it I can name IK curve here we go so that we know what it is for so right now go ahead we are gonna under show menu isolate selection make sure you select the uh, C spine IK curve isolate it shortcut is control N here we go so that's easier to manipulate it at the moment right click choose control vertex and we're gonna use right here four vertices on the bottom from the bottom because this one we want it to stay together these two now why do we do that because of this hold on let me grab this quick here we go right there because we want that at the end so and the last three will be that pivot point on the center 
So we try to optimize it to just only two rotation. We'll bend all of them. Okay. So here we go. So under the formation or the form menu cluster. And before you leave, just name it before we, you forget. So I'm going to call C span cluster. Here we go. Oh, this one will be bottom. So I'm going to call a cluster one. How about just something simple? Let me copy that name too. Here we go. Cluster one. So now select the curve, right click, control vertex. This time will be three of this. That's all we need. And deformer cluster, rename it to cluster two. Okay one and two so now we can bring everything back again control one shortcut or go to show menu uncheck isolate uh, isolate select view selected here we go so now we are gonna create a controller okay so we are gonna create two controller uh, low neck and up neck so like Control one, control two, basically. I'm gonna use a cube, and um, now I'm gonna move up. Here we go. Now I'm gonna press F to frame selection, and the pivot point will be right there. So I'm gonna hold V key and then move. Oh, sorry, V key move. Let it snap to that joint. If it's hard to see uh, to snap, you just uncheck visibility of the layer and then move it. That might be quicker. So I'm gonna bring it back now. Now there, are, uh, I'm gonna use Shift Alt X and left mouse click marking menu for my selection. I'm gonna focus only on curve. If you don't have these. It's okay. Just move vertices. Try as uh, try as much as you can to grab the vertices because it might be a little difficult. So I'm gonna move that a little bit. Here we go. And you can even rotate, scale. Here we go. Wow. Okay. Let me change scale to. Oh, it's already object. Okay, never mind. So I'm gonna just move then. If it's that difficult, just move. The reason is we want this to be bigger than the geometry so that we can uh, select easier. So now I'm going to go to object mode, scale it. I might have to reselect. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to grab this too. I'm going to shrink just a bit, tad. Here we go. So, okay. Do I like that? This might be too small. Here we go. Okay. So this is will be a um, bottleneck. So now we're gonna just duplicate this. Control D. Move it. And now, um. I'm gonna change this pivot point to right here. It's about this joint because let me let me see if uh, we can reposition them later. So I'm gonna hold V key, snap. Here we go, and let me look. So I'm gonna scale this a little bit down. Control vertex. Let's grab the vertices on the bottom. CV, the bottom scale a little bit. Here we go. How about that? Oh, <laughs> the bottom, not the top. The what I did wrong. Here we go. I just got confused with the uh, image reference on the view. So grab the top part, enlarge it a little bit, so that a head does not interfere. Let's switch to a uh, referencing. So it still does interfere. I'm going to make it 
right click choose object mode and you have to reselect it and I'm gonna just scale a little bit let me right there wider that one too there we go okay so that would be easier to select now and let me see this part though I could put in a little backward you don't have to do that but I'm gonna do it just for the sake of selection let me grab this make it a little higher here we go okay so and now we can test select the cluster I'm gonna use my marking menu switch to deformer and I'm gonna grab the that cluster the uh, shift select um, oh sorry I'm gonna have to use this and add curve here we go and press P or parent so now my Yao will give a uh, feedback lines that it need to add group node to preserve the position and guess what I make a mistake okay can you undo that we have not fees transform and rename these objects yet so select two of these modify fees transformation here we go and I'm gonna call a SK C -sp let's call something simpler low neck low neck CTL okay and this one will be up neck you can name anything you want actually so okay so now we are good to go make sure you face transformation here we go so select I'm gonna use let me switch back to all selection I'm late uh, I think it might be too much work to switch uh, marking menu so I'm gonna select the cluster number one on outliner and then shift select the low neck parent it and then go to the um, under a uh, neck control low neck control hierarchy we want it to match name this will be cluster one GP here we go so that we know what it is and uh, Maya need that as a preserved position it has to be so now test if I grab that and rotate the spine follow this is correct okay so next thing will be a cluster number two shift select a uh, up neck control press P rename it under outliner let's rename on the outliner this is going to be a cluster 2 GP here we go so now the cluster 2 GP controlled by this so now if we rotate this this will work so now if we do this again rotate the first one it doesn't look like what we want well that because this controller need to follow this controller so the app can follow control uh, low now you could just parent this to that from the upper to the lower it's just fine some people might want to make it more complicated by parent this control to the higher joints which is this area that would be fine too so in this case we make it simple we select the upper neck control shift select the lower neck control make sure you face transform before you parenting them okay so press P so now when I grab this here we go and follow and then I can rotate that also see okay put it back to zero and save your scene let me save let me save scene as three here we go okay 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the head control. So we need another joint set. There we go. So we're going to place another join hierarchy. So skeleton create join once again this is the option. Okay. So click and move right around there. So that will be the head movement. And then this will be the jaw rotate like that. Some people like to add extra joy here as a reference. You could if you like to. If you wanted to have a, uh, let's say, it, uh, a beer right there, we can add extra join there too. So how about let's do that. One and two there. So these are just a reference. Press enter. Here we go. We're going to animate rotation right here. That's all we need. These can be parent to something, can use as a parenting, like um, um, cigarettes, maybe, stuff like that. And um, now I'm going to leave this the room for this because I am planning to do a lecture on modifying geometry to make it like your own later on after we finish the whole rig. Okay, so for people who are interested in once again those modification of the shape is just suggestion it's not uh, required so you don't have to do it if you don't feel comfortable uh, comfortable with it if you do you get extra point if you don't there will be no point subtract at all you still be able to get a if your rig and your demo are good okay so let's leave that join now I'm gonna deselect we need more joints on the tip because let's turn on join this time we're gonna connect it to existing join so I turn on join 2 and click on the root of the neck joint neck joint and then I'm gonna hold shift let's make it straight line just like that so it looks like this looks like a something yeah so now this is tip we can use this to parent a to control a hat or glasses or eyes control stuff like that so so now let's rename this this will be a neck joint so i'm gonna just manually rename sk uh, neck tnt this one will oh not neck sorry guys a uh, head head because we already have neck head and this will be head tip that one I'm gonna call join in how about just add in on it easier so now this will be jaw jaw rotate jaw rotate okay and I'm gonna copy that uh oh <laughs> hold on control C and these two though I'm gonna select both I'm gonna change to just a jaw here we go so it will be jaw one and jaw two this one I can call joy in here we go okay so let's organize this a little bit these are three of these we are not really control the rotate any geometry so let's set this to small I'm gonna just do point two I mean point one point two point three is okay here we go so just a little tiny because these are will be the main that we're gonna use okay so now we're gonna create a controller uh, box control I'm gonna just turn on move to and then middle mouse drag now if it hard to do 
just shift select this joint go to modify align to does it align hey where's my align to it could be that it won't let us align the uh, join so I'm gonna just move it it's because of the pivot node I'm gonna hide a uh, mesh layer temporary so that I can snap them easily so I just snap to that and I scale it a little bit bigger snap to the joint the the head joint now I want to be quite big here we go so go to control vertex this time I'm gonna control uh, alt shift X left mouse button click gonna switch to curve here we go so that easier to select for me by the way and gonna how about just like that just a little bit beyond the head there we go okay all right so let's fees this modify fees and I'm gonna call SK head CTL okay feeds transform don't forget and now this joint that joint oh oh <laughs> I forgot to turn this back on so next joint will be a shout of the head control parent so now you can guess one thing in order to make the head follow the neck these head control need to be a shout of the upper neck control the up neck control parent it so now see if I grab this up neck control the head follow this is what we want now what about the jaw though so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna create I'm gonna use this icon here we go and move it up I'm gonna snap that middle to the joint so hold V key snap to there oh there we go turn that back on I like to extend this a little longer so that will be a jaw control so I'm gonna name uh, SK jaw CTL oh CTL Yep, CTL. Okay. Sorry, CTL, not CTR. Okay. Fees transformation, modify fees. And we want these uh, jaw control to be a shout of the head control. So that it follow with the head. Right? Okay. So now we're gonna connect the joy rotation or uh, the uh, uh, jaw control rotation to the rotation of the jaw rotate join basically I'm gonna deselect let me hide this temporary hide the layer so go to window general editor and choose connection editor here we go so the jaw rotate load to the left as an output and highlight rotate set we're gonna do the whole set okay and now you select the join uh, the jaw rotate join load to the right here we go and look for rotation highlight the whole rotation set that's it so now this will rotate the jaw rotation joy and will follow the head 
And actually, joy also has one motion though. This motion, left and right motion. So we are gonna connect. Let me see. That's translate x. So we can connect translate x to translate x. So let's go back window general editor and uh, general editor and connection editor load the jaw rotate control the uh, jaw road control to the left and we're gonna find the translate focus only on translate x just only one axis of translation and then select the jaw rotate rotate left uh, lo re reload to the right look for translate again where is my translation oh right there sorry here we go X close so now you got this motion here we go so you want to do a little limitation on that though let's do limit so before we do that let's uh, parenting the geometry first so select the head shape and parent it to the head joint head shape to the head joint uh -oh. so here we go parent it and the jaw shape will be a jaw bone here we go so press P test grab the jaw rot uh, control ah I parented incorrect so it has to be right there here we go that's it okay here we go now grab the head control that's correct and test the neck yes okay there we go all right oh I don't like that subtle at all I want it to bend more but never mind this one should be okay um, we could change the pivot point to right around here instead that might be better so but it's okay leave it there and um okay so now let's limit this slide left to right see how far you want it to slide so I think my should be just like a bit maybe point one let's see minus point one that's good enough minus point one so let's do that minus point one and then let's go to attribute editor and translate node on the uh, jaw control limit information open up and expand translate right now current is minus point one let's assign that to the minimum and enable it now the maximum will be positive so just point one here we go so we lock them now that's all we could do here we go okay and we can rotate there we go okay so now you could limit the rotation also let's let's do that limit it so rotate and right now we are on um, rotation so if I rotate this is the uh, the widest I can open How about right there that's kind of too wide actually so uh, assign it to up oh, to maximum here we go so turn that on now the minimum though let's try how much you can go I think that's all I need it's already permitted okay let me uh, let me assign it and I can come back and readjust later so let's see here we go 
and why I got two of those here we go supposed to rotate only that direction here we go so seven let me try more Let, let's try more how about unlock go to unlock again then let's do how about that here we go a little more oh <laughs> rotate it first and then assign it and then lock here we go so all right so we finished that job the next thing though we're gonna do the eyes okay okay first can you turn on a texture because I add ram shader ram texture on the nerve surface so that we can see the eyeball and, and uh, uh, okay so now I'm gonna create a shape that looks like a glass so you don't have to you could use one of these also if you like let's save this scene quick save so I'm gonna go to font view and I'm gonna start it with a circle just click on it and um, you could rotate I'm gonna press A from there and 90 degree here we go just use that for now and change uh, use that location to linear and I'm gonna hold X key and move it right there and then control D to duplicate and move control and hold X key so that it snap like this so basically we're gonna draw a new curve I'm gonna select both display and uh, nerves edit point we want to turn on edit point so double click uh, on e key, uh, EP curve to right here double click on it I like you to change to linear one by default probably three but change to linear okay here we go and then I'm gonna hold V key and go ahead draw it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen I just overlap a little bit so you can delete the original now this is what we wanted so I gonna move that all the way to the eye here we go now where the location you want it to be though it's up to you don't need to move too far okay so that you uh, we're gonna animate the cross eyes also so I'm not going to move it too far it's gonna be just right there here we go and this might be too big I'm gonna scale it down a little bit here we go okay and I could play around a little bit control one to isolate I'm gonna grab these two vertices and just shrink it oh scale here we go how about that okay control one again to bring everything back so I think I can make it a little bigger how about that feast transformation and rename call eyes control SK don't forget eyes CTL here we go and the eye we're gonna animate only translate that's all so right now we're gonna do that and then oop, I got to press six on my keyboard turn that on here we go so let me take a look here we go so basically this is gonna follow that tip on the head so I'm not going to parent them in there yet because otherwise this will shift inside somewhere so we don't want that yet okay so we want it to be easy to see right here for now let me zoom okay so we got to do a little prep here I will be at M look at M so let's save this scene quick and let me create a new scene don't do it okay I'm gonna just show you how it works so basically if I have let's say if I have a, um, a box and a cone 
So cone will be 90 degree. Here we go. And I'm going to move that. So let me face transform. There we go. So basically, I'm going to make the cone follow wherever this location, uh, wherever the box move. The point will be point toward. It's aiming. So you select the uh, parent first to do a constraint and then select the child last under constraint you have aim now aim option maintain offset we want it set layer to override just leave it there if you have animation layers you can assign if you like to now the aim vector is set to x at 100 percent so this is x so we'll follow this x we'll see right now is z direction and up vector is y up right now the word up vectors also match with y y now we don't have to concern this so much at all because we consistent making everything line up to the word space so it will work right away by default. Only on certain particular rigging that you are required to have a different pivot point, uh, local axis rotation, you have to play around with this. So right now, if I select the parent, the constraint object, and select the last object that will be constrained to, click Apply. Now, when I grab this, can you see? It's follow exactly where it's supposed to go. Okay, so this is what we wanted. Okay, so I'm going to close that down and I'm going to go back to my zine. Don't save this one. Here we go. So now, though, to make this a little more cleaner, we don't want it to constrain directly to the geometry just in case we wanted to animate the geometry itself so it's nice and cleaner anyway by this practice so this is what I'm gonna do I am not going to use group node I'm gonna use locator because it has a uh, icon referencing on the view so I'm gonna enable my uh, shelf tab I have a locator. If you don't have this shelf, if you go back to the week 11, there's a section that show you how to copy in uh, copy to Maya preferences. So if you don't have this, you have to go to create menu, locator. I already have mine. I'm going to create it. So it's going to be on the bottom. Now, while still selected, I'm going to shift select this eyeball. Oops we go might be a little hard to select switch to four and here we go and then switch to six back press four to wireframe six to smooth and shade all plus texture and then I'm gonna use modify align to align to center like that okay now create another locator do the same thing shift select you might have to switch to four again zoom in right there here we go I was on a line two already so I can just do it right get a zoom in closer here we go so switch to selection two now it's time to press six okay time to feast transform on the locator ah so here we go okay modify freeze it okay and we're gonna name this so I basically gonna just copy the name of the eye here we go I uh, so I'm gonna put that and leave the word locator Locator, here we go. 
and SR so this one will be a uh, here we go will be L it's L actually it should be SK right I that's the old name so SK L I how about that let me rename SK uh, here we go okay save so now we can constrain aim constraint select the uh, eye control shift select the uh, locator one at a time constrain aim option maintain offset aim vector to x-axis because it's a object mode and then a um, y-axis up vector both vector up and we're up vector type to vector plus a one on y so 100 percent basically and there's an option in here we don't use there's a scene up to scene up will use y axis but these objects already line up to the scene and then you have object up object rotation up this is depends on different orientation of the object we don't have to worry about that click apply now reselect the uh, eye control shift select the other side of the locator and apply again close it so now when you grab it if you move left and right Huh. So it's follow, right? So now if you push in, it's going to create a cross eye. Can you see? And you know, even wider. So now we got to parent the, um, these eyeball to that control, uh, locator. Here we go. Let's select the eyeball. I have to select like this and press P. So now let's test. Here we go, cross eye. Go up and down. That's it. Okay. So we're gonna put zero. And you can limit ouch. <laughs> you can limit your eye rotate by limit the translate. So you so let's do a little limited. So attribute editor. Okay, go to uh, eye control, okay, and we're going to select translate. Let's move inward right there. So I'm going to assign to, because negative will be a minimum, lock it. Now for the maximum though, I'm going to... Um, it depends if you want this to be able to do like that I don't think we need to I think we're gonna lock it at zero don't let it go beyond that so now what about left and right so left I just gonna make sure it's nobody can do that it just if you look at on the uh, it's right here can you see the eye that's all you can get visual limit left and right it's about 94 angle but so we how about that here we go and click assign to minimum turn on and the maximum will be 5.39 same here we go so that we can go that way and we'll end right there that's how we could go so same thing as the top and the top the vision is about 45 degree based on this reference 45 upper limit upper vision limit so let's see how far we need to so that's how I think so be positive 2.5 3 and I'm gonna put negative assign click here we go so we limit it okay so and now we are done with that part so I'm gonna go to zero and 
at the end we're gonna come back and we assign uh lock everything that will not that we will not be animated that they are not sorry that will not be animated okay so right now though if i rotate the torso doesn't go with it yet so we need to make it follow that's easy so select this base joint of the uh, cervical spine parented to the box here we go that's it the torso so now it will go with oh you know what because we need to parent this to the base joint also I forgot about that so the base joint parent it so now it should work yes and last thing we need once again guys this low neck control will be a shout of the base C, uh, cervical spine and cervical spine will be a shout of the box of the, the torso the upper body control sorry here we go so that it go like this here we go next thing though these need to be all together it's already an aim on that we want this to be in a group so this is what I gonna do I'm gonna select all two locators of the eyes group it to itself control G and we're gonna rename this we're gonna call in uh, SKI group eyes group okay and SKI group will be a shout of the tip so let's change the pivot point press D turn on move to move a little yeah we go and let's put the pivot point of the group node to right there press D and go ahead shift select the uh, end join and press P so now if I rotate it the I group should follow but you will see something here we go all right okay so we need to parent this to the head control here we go so if I parent it you'll be able to rotate the head and the eye follow here we go so and this is a simple way there's another more complex and um we could actually make i follow and not follow so it's mean if we rotate like this we can leave this stay there so that the eye uh, keep looking down so it's like you pin your eye into this point and then you move the head i will keep staying to look at the same location right so it's just like this if i shift p to uh to disconnect the parent see it look like this what if we want to be to have two option like look up look down we could we have to use a little trick so basically we have to use orient constraint and point constraint we cannot use parent constraint because we need to disable one of them so we have to separate point and translate and rotation but it cannot happen at this point though it has to happen the pivot point rotate at the neck joint or the orientation of the head in order to make it work how do we make it work though that's not too difficult so we need something on top of this and has a pivot point right there 
we can't just I mean you might want to think like okay what about if I change the pivot point here to there Oop. no we can't can you see because the aim constraint it follow the local axis so it can't change it I mean you can change it before you connect them but then it's gonna look a little awkward because the way you move you move at that point not on itself so so this is what we're gonna do I'm gonna copy the name of this control and I'm gonna add group node and change the pivot point of the group node to there so edit group here we go group to itself so it's coming down there we're gonna change the pivot point let's hide the layer quick and let's move that a little bit and let's snap to that join the head join so V snap here we go so and then press D to disable pivot node we get to rename them so this one will be control GP here we go so now we are gonna constrain this so you can bring the uh, layer back so that we can see the effect so to constrain that group we're gonna have to select the head control and use outliner control click to select the eyes control GP not the controller the GP the group and under constraint we're gonna use point constraint make sure you turn on maintain offset apply and then go back to the constraint orient turn on maintain offset again apply so now on the group node itself has this constraint so let's rotate it now we did not constrain directly to the eye control though we are on the top hierarchy of the eye control that has pivot point right there so it does follow exactly where it's supposed to do and also follow the orientation also see so you can rotate it now that's not enough let's put this back to how did I have translated I moved by accident the translate so got to be zero okay so now if you select the I group node let's test again if I rotate see it's follow right so now select the I group node and look for a uh, translation a uh, point constraint we're gonna disable uh, let's um, disable orient constraint so uh, let me let's do zero and test here we go so we disable the orient constraint so now let's go like that but point constraint still stay there so it's mean if we move the body move the body it should follow it should follow otherwise we'll be left behind so that's why we need point constraint so I'm gonna go back to zero now it's not intuitive try to come back in here on the group node and disable this or enable the uh, orange constraint what we can do we can select the eye control and add another attribute called I follow or something so I'm gonna call a uh, modify add attribute and let's call uh, I follow maybe it's gonna follow I hmm what did you have I yeah I just call I follow something like that here we go and we're gonna use boolean because we want on and off zero and one basically click add close so we got I follow so now we're gonna connect this so I'm gonna deselect open up attribute editor window general editor and connection editor here we go we're gonna load the eye control to 
left side output look for I follow highlight it and I'm gonna use outliner and just select the orange constraint there load to the right side and then look for a weight so SK head control W 0 highlight it close right now it's off because by default we set this to zero so this become off can you see so now when we rotate we get this effect here we go and when we if we rotate this it will look just like this don't worry it's it's follow the point right so now when we rotate this it will just look like this because it follow the point not orientation Th that's not a problem because it's just the way it is but when I move it is absolutely follow here we go so that's what we wanted so now I can go back here and enable it press 1 and now it will follow the orientation so that's it for today and right now it's look like this here we go okay it's just the orientation here we go so i can oop, oop, here we go zero. okay that's it for this lecture and all right save your file and i will see you next section